Good morning. <laughs> St. Paul says today in the epistle, Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say, Rejoice. <laughs> and uh, uh, we've got a couple uh, announcements. And as always, there's tons of them in the, in the fridge flyer. Make sure to grab one of these if you haven't already on the way out. But a couple things to bring to your attention. We have uh, um, our last midweek um, Advent service. We won't have one uh, the week of Christmas, but our, our last one is this coming Wednesday, and there's a, a 515 potluck. If you're coming straight from work um, or can't um, get something together, don't worry. Um, we've, we haven't run out of food yet. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I've, in fact, I've never had a, a church a potluck that ran out of food. And uh, um, so anyway, that's this uh, Wednesday. It's the Holden Evening Prayer, a beautiful service. And we're, we're going through um, the catechism on the Lord's Supper. The Word became flesh and dwelt among us. That's what we're, we're celebrating this Advent season. Um, the Word becomes flesh and comes to us in, with, and under the bread and the wine and the mystery of His Holy Supper. So um, anyway, that's on Wednesday. There's the children's Christmas service will be the Sunday evening uh, in place of the Sunday evening service on December 19th at 6 p.m. So um, next Sunday night, uh, at the same time as the evening service, the, the children will be telling the, the Christmas story better than Pastor Carlson can ever tell it. <laughs> it's humbling every year. I'm reminded of that. And then there's um, just the last thing. Uh, there's a couple. Uh, uh, there's a handbell um, Christmas concert today um, at, at 5 p.m. here at the church. Um, my dear wife is the, is the director, and uh, she said, honey, make sure to make that announcement. <laughs> and, uh, and you know what I said? Yes, dear. <laughs> and, uh, but no, it's a beautiful, they're, they're putting on um, about a 45-minute uh, concert um, with the handbells. They've been working on this. Um, it's, it's beautiful. So, and there's also Gail Johansson uh, and, and, uh, is having a, um, a recital. And that, that's, um, well, that's today at 2 o'clock. So anyway, um, and that's uh, violins and uh, um, it, 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 there's so much. And, and then there's others, uh, uh, um, a, a violin uh, recital on the 17th and, and other things. But a lot going on. But, um, you know, it, it, as I always say, taking time out during the craziness and busyness of the season and just pausing and reflecting, whether it's on music or the message in, in, the, in the service, um, it, it, it changes our whole perspective that week. Uh, time actually slows down, <laughs> and uh, I truly believe that. Um, so anyway, um, just a few announcements. Um, we're going to pause now for uh, um, uh, a time of reflection, a prelude, and then we'll begin with our opening hymn.
If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may be light in your word and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his son to die for you, and for his sake, forgives you all of your sins. As a call to our name, servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
Lord Jesus Christ, we implore you to hear our prayers and to lighten the darkness of our hearts by your gracious visitation. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Old Testament reading this morning comes from Zephaniah chapter 3. Sing aloud, O daughter of Zion. Shout, O Israel. Rejoice and exult with all your heart, O daughter of Jerusalem. The Lord has taken away the judgments against you. He has cleared away your enemies. The King of Israel, the Lord, is in your midst. He shall never again fear evil. You shall never again fear evil. On that day it shall be said to Jerusalem, Fear not, O Zion, let not your hands grow weak. The Lord your God is in your midst, a mighty one who will save. He will rejoice over you with gladness. He will quiet you by his love. He will exult over you with loud singing. I will gather those of you who mourn for the festival so that you will no longer suffer reproach. Behold, at that time I will deal with all your oppressors, and I will save the lame and gather the outcasts, and I will change their shame into praise and renown in all the earth. At that time I will bring you in, at that time when I gather you together, for I will make you renowned and praised among all the peoples of the earth when I restore your fortunes before your eyes, says the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. The epistle lesson comes from Philippians chapter 4. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again I say rejoice. Let your reasonableness be known to everyone. The Lord is at hand. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God, and the peace of God, which passes all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. O oh Lord, to whom shall we you have the word of eternal life. Alleluia, alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the seventh chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. The disciples of John reported all these things to him. And John, calling two of his disciples to him, sent them to the Lord, saying, Are you the one who is to come, or shall we look for another? And when the man had come to him, they said, uh, John the Baptist has sent us to you, saying, Are you the one who is to come, or shall we look for another? In that hour he healed many people of diseases and plagues and evil spirits, and on many who were blind he bestowed sight. And he answered them, Go and tell John what you have seen and heard. The blind receive their sight, the lame walk, lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised up, the poor have good news preached to them, and blessed is the one who is not offended by me. When John's messengers had gone, Jesus began to speak to the crowds concerning John. What did you go out in the wilderness to see? A reed shaken by the wind? What then did you go out to see? A man dressed in soft clothing? Behold, those who are dressed in splendid clothing and live in luxury are in king's courts. What then did you go out to see? A prophet? Yes, I tell you, and more than a prophet. This is he of whom it is written, Behold, I send my messenger before your face, 
who will prepare your way before you. I tell you, among those born of women, none is greater than John, yet the one who is least in the kingdom of God is greater than he. This is the gospel of our Lord.
St. Paul's words in, in the epistle lesson today, Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say, rejoice. You know, as it's a, a time of, of preparation, uh, not unlike Lent, uh, a time of, of uh, ref Lent is a time of reflection on our sins that, that put Jesus on the cross. Advent's a time of reflection. Why did God need to intervene in this mess we live in in the world and send his son? It's because of us. But there's this anticipation as we get ready to celebrate his first coming. And there's also in the midst of this the reminder that he's coming again in glory one day. And so the, the pink candles lit. It's a time of anticipation, a time of rejoicing also. And there's a lot to be excited about this time of year. Just had my in-laws arrive last night and uh, flew in from Arizona. And uh, I've got my daughter coming on Monday night. And uh, uh, it's exciting to have family visiting at this time of year. It's exciting to, I, I enjoy all the services. In fact, I go to all of them. I enjoy them so much. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, uh, but the, it's just a fun time of year. And there, there's all the, the, the concerts going on and all, all this other stuff. And, and uh, But this is what St. Paul is talking about. He's talking about uh, rejoicing in the midst of difficulties and trials. The first time I pe preached on, on Philippians chapter 4, we had become a, a third fleet asset, went through the Straits of Hormuz into the Persian Gulf. We started getting hazardous duty pay when you go through the Straits of Hormuz. Our, our ship would be painted up with uh, anti-ship uh, uh, missile uh, radars that would lock onto us from the Iranian side, and we were just like uh, five miles from, from these missile batteries. And uh, we were on an ammo and fuel ship. Really improves your prayer life, by the way. But we, we went in in August into the Gulf, and, and here it was December. We're doing operations in the Gulf. Uh, there, were, there, were laying, there were mines uh, that were laid in the Gulf, and we didn't know where they were. We had five minesweepers working the Gulf at the time. And in the midst of all of this, uh, not knowing whether we were going to make it back or not, um, Here's this passage. Rejoice in the Lord always and again. I say rejoice. Well, St. Paul was no stranger to danger. And he, he was, at, at the time of the writing of this, he was, he was chained to a guard in, in Rome. Uh, and, and he was one of the emperor's personal guests. He had appealed to the emperor for the second time, causing unrest in the Roman Empire, which is a big no-no. <laughs> that causing unrest uh, disrupted the flow of taxes to Rome. And emperors didn't like that. The first emperor had acquitted him. He was coming out the second time, and this time before Nero. And Nero wasn't a nice guy. <laughs> you all know some history, right? He knew he was on death row. And he's writing to the church, and remember one of the members of the church there in Philippi was the jailer who jailed him after he was beaten with the cat of nine tails and his skin left in ribbons um, and chained in, in, in this jailer's dungeon. And uh, remember the earthquake and the chains came loose and the jailer was going to kill himself and, and he says, hold off, everybody's here to count it for, don't take your life. When he became a Christian, he and the whole house was baptized. Would have been a member of the church there in Philippi and remembered that. Here's a guy who'd been through beatings, imprisonment, and difficulties, was currently waiting on death row. It, it gives a whole different meaning when he says, Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say, Rejoice. What was he so excited about? He knew he was going to be seeing Jesus soon, and he was excited about it. And he's writing words of encouragement to the church in Philippi and the church in Fairbanks, Alaska. 
They'll rejoice even when things aren't going as planned. And it's in the imperative, you know, do this. <laughs> rejoice. Always. A little, a little love. Bit of what we call a wall. Uh, you know, we don't like to be to hear that when you're when you're down and out. Cheer up! <laughs> no, I want to have a pity party. And and somebody told us to, to rejoice when we feel like crying or, or or having a pity party. Rejoicing even when things aren't going well. And how do we do that? By keeping our eyes on Jesus. It's easy to get our eyes off of him and be distracted by what's happening around us. And, and we, we get, you know, and joy, faith, peace, love. These are all nouns. And, and, and remember you're from grammar uh, school, uh, nouns are a person, place, or thing, not something you do. It's not an action or a state of being. That's, that's a verb. These are nouns. They're, they're, they're gifts of the Holy Spirit. So the joy is a gift. Rejoicing is a verb. <laughs> but the joy given to us is, is a gift by God. Being able to rejoice even when we're going through difficult times. That's the Holy Spirit at work in us. And, and, and it's also keeping our eyes fixed on Christ. It's especially when the pressures of the world are closing in on us that we need to rejoice. And, and you're aware of all kinds of studies. The, the holidays are an exceptionally stressful time for men. Emotionally, it, uh, there's a reminder of not being with loved ones. There's loved ones that we can't be with, especially up here in Alaska. And, and uh, it can be a, a sad, depressing time. And, and the cold and the darkness don't help either. And it's, I think, keeping our eyes on Christ rather than what's going on around us that brings the rejoicing. And, and don't get me wrong, it's okay to have a pity party every once in a while. I certainly throw them for myself every once in a while. And great, great saints in the Bible have. Remember Elijah was so depressed one time he went out in the desert without any water. A day's journey into the desert and, and he was planning on, on uh, dying of, uh, of, of thirst out there. He was done. He'd had it. God still had work for him to do, and an angel came and gave him water and food and said, your work isn't done yet, Elijah. Moses had said, you know, so I can take my life. I, I, I had it. You know, there's, there's um, Job cursing the day he was born. And I uh, yeah, there, there are difficulties, and we, and, and we do get down and out. But instead of staying there in that pit, that emotional pit, <coughs> keeping, keeping our eyes fixed on Christ and, and the, the good news of what he's done for us, as he lifts us up out of that pit of despair and gives us a reason to rejoice. And that peace that he gives us, that peace that passes all understanding that we can have even in the midst of difficulties and trials. We find many reasons to rejoice in, in God's gift of his son for us, his forgiveness, the gifts of the Holy Spirit that he, he, he grants us. Be able to rejoice in the midst of the darkness and dreariness of Alaska winters and in the midst of being away from others. We can rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say, rejoice. Amen. Now may the peace of God, which passes all human understanding, keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Life is alive.
we confess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father of our Lord, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, both for us men and for our salvation, came down from heaven, and was confirmed by the Holy Spirit of Virgin Mary, and was made a man, and was crucified also for us in the conscious Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again, according to the scriptures, and ascended to heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord who gives our life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipfully glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge the baptism for the remission of sins. I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We pray for people near and dear and those distant for whom life seems to be a wilderness, that God would provide pastors and teachers to remind them of their baptism and bring them joy in the promises of God so that their desert shall rejoice and blossom like the crocus. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. For our communities and country and for all the nations of the world, wherever people live amid joyless conflict and endless reprisals, that they find a measure of joy, believing that your God will come with vengeance, with the recompense of God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. And for those dealing with long-term illness of mind or body, Special, oh Lord, we, we lift up to you those that are mourning the loss of loved ones, for the family of Jairus Freeman, the family of Carl Braun, and others mourning the loss of loved ones. For uh, a, a mom who's newly uh, early stages of pregnancy, you keep her, her safe, protect her and her child. For Gail and Scoutstead, and for Ken, Randy, Clayle, and, and Dave Rue, the sister of Steve Weiss, Jan Barker, Jessica, Nancy Bernhardt, and Randa Pettyjohn, Naomi Herbert, and Lorna Wright, and for the open arms families and staff to be with them, and be with the Open Arms Board and the, and, and the congregation, the efforts of calling uh, the new director of operations for Open Arms. For the 15 kidnapped missionaries in Haiti. And other requests that we present to you at this time, O oh Lord, in our hearts. We also give you thanksgiving for Emily Herbeck, who's done with her, her cancer treatments and doing well. Give you thanks for the three more missionaries that have been released this last week in, in Haiti. And for countless other things, oh Lord, we give you our thanks and our praise. We pray that healthcare professionals and volunteers bring those in need joy as they strengthen the weak hands and make firm the feeble knees. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, For people who have no true joy because they do not have the gospel, that God would inspire artists and craftspeople, musicians and poets to share the good news so that they shall obtain gladness and joy. And sorrow and signs, signs shall flee away. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. And for the church, wherever it is opposed or persecuted, that God remind his faithful people of our Savior's gift of his own righteousness and lift their eyes to joyfully behold the path to heaven that shall be called the way of holiness. Let us pray to the Lord. 
Lord God. These and any other things you would have us ask of you, Heavenly Father, grant to us for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
one God now and forever. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and grant you his peace. Thank you.